that privilege now. Okay, I'm recording. All right, All right awesome. Hi, this is Sheila with Conscious Conversation Central. Today is Monday, March the 5th, 2018, and yay, I get to talk with Danny Lunacy again. It's been a while. Hello. How are you? I'm, I'm lovely. How about you? I'm, I'm doing a whole lot better now. <laughs> I haven't put out any videos yet. I've got a whole crap ton of them to put out. Um, because I've been recording, but I haven't put them out because I wasn't ready to do that. But I'll be putting them out probably either really late tonight or tomorrow. So how have you been? Yeah, I've been busy on my channel. I've been doing uh, a lot of videos on the filings to at least take us through document, what, 151. Now there's some more to do uh, with, the what, the fifth and final price of pay? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, who, who knows, uh, who knows we're without precedent. Uh, we're just waiting to see what happens and taking the observations as they come. Well, I haven't dug completely into it yet, but there's been some other developments too, you know, are you aware that another executive order has been issued? I, I did see that, yes. <clears throat> yeah. This one making some amendments to the manual for courts martial. Yeah. I found that a bit interesting. I haven't, like I said, I haven't looked into it because there's going to be a lot of correlating that's going to have to be done because it states that some things that were amendments that were done back in the 80s that didn't actually take effect now are going to be taking effect as of the date of that. I mean, there's some correlation that I think has to be done and I haven't really looked into it um, quite as deeply as I'd like to yet, but that's coming. Mm -hmm. Are you going to do a reading on that EO as well? Yes. Yes, I am. Because that's, I think that's a, uh, there's, there feels to be something in that. Again, I'm not quite sure what, but it certainly goes hand in hand for me. Just the pure synchronicity of it happening now and the fact that <laughs> I have said all along that the next step was court martials, or not court martials, but military tribunals. The fact that <clears throat> some of the documents that, that it is referring to have to do with espionage and treason and all kinds of really cool stuff. So yeah. I'm thinking, yeah, anybody that can't see that these things are connected really isn't looking at all or very hard it, in my opinion, but that's just me because <laughs> I haven't even really looked into it yet and I can see uh, a correlation. Well, it'll be really interesting. Uh, you, you told me, I think it was from you, uh, that Heather asked Parker Still um, about military tribunals and if he'd, what, if he'd ever been a part of them or something? If he, what, in his role with, uh, because he served as a JAG officer, that's Judge Advocate General, that's, that's attorney in the uh, reserves. He was in the reserves. And she'd asked in what capacity he served in, I, th I think it was either court martials or military tribunals. And he really couldn't recall and um, nothing ever more than an advisory role is what he said. Um, that's what his answer was. But I just thought, <clears throat> I want, you know, all along, I always thought, well, now what in the world would that have to do with the case at hand? But now, like I said, having seen this roll out the way it has, and now my consciousness being expanded. And remember, I went into this not really comprehending much of anything about the UCC and the OPPT and all the background 
information that I'm, I'm now becoming more familiar with. Mm -hmm. I'm in the same boat. Right. And, but I can clearly see where that question in and of itself was a bit of foreshadowing. I feel again, just my opinion and having been in the courtroom and, you know, it's not like there were any court martials going on at that time or military tribunals going on at that time or that it was anywhere near a topic that needed to be brought up for any reason, unless you hold what's been transpiring, um, you know, just beneath the surface with all of this. Yeah, you know, just the, the energy or the feel, because I, I haven't met Heather in person yet. I've had like a 30 second phone call with her. And, and now just today, I've established a, an email uh, connection with her. And all of the energy that I get from her is just what, like she, just a normal day in the office, uh, you know, just She's on a, a little extended business trip and, uh, you know, everything's uh, just going down according to plan. And, and just that, that demeanor, that, that behavior uh, in the midst of, you know, uh, pretty much a, a, a dog and pony show court, kangaroo court, uh, that leads to a conviction that, you know, for with with where she is uh, in this particular incarnation, the the maximum penalty. Uh, you know, she might never get out if if all of that particular track goes down. And she's just normal day in the office and uh, behavior. All behavior has its roots in perception, so. To, to have this particular behavior displayed so consistently and apparently so authentically throughout the entire process really makes me wonder what, what is this person's perception and, you know, what does she know that the rest of us don't? And, and that's, those are the questions that, that I ask. Well, the, the more I uh, expand and play in this particular playground, the, the clearer I feel I personally am getting in regards to really comprehending the whole thing. I, now I've been, I don't know, I don't know how many, I, there's a few emails that I have received that I noticed that you received as well. And I don't know, you probably, because I do know that you have a lot more viewers than I have. I've had a few, what's a nice way to put this? undercover emails and what I mean by that is someone using a, a forwarding service to keep their identity I guess completely secret or whatever I'm not quite sure what the goal is in that especially I you know I because I will tell you that I just you know as an aside I'm not going to play in the playground where folks don't wish to be transparent for me that. I'm not going to play cloak and dagger. That's not my playground. I'm not in that. I don't wish to be part of that at all. <clears throat> so, you know, just, you know, and a side note for anyone who is listening or cares to know, if you need to send me an email and you're going to send it through a forwarding service, don't bother because it will be deleted. I'm not going to play that game. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm out here. I'm using my real name. I'm, you know, I'm talking to folks and just being my authentic self. I, I don't have time for that. That's, that's sounds, it that feels like a game. I just don't want to play. So anyway, there's that, but I mean, you're right. Now I've met Heather in person, but every person so far that I've come into contact with in regards to this 
it's like I can see where there's honesty, transparency, and everything. Now, I've been being contacted by some that are asking these questions like, you know, what happened to the money? And I'm like, what money? Because I never heard anything about, you know, people donating anything that, that wasn't for expenses and, you know, straight up knowing about stuff. Folks have been very transparent, but I've heard things like, you know, people saying that promises were made and things like that. And I, I've looked into a lot of this stuff now and I've not heard any specific promises being made. Now I haven't looked into everything, of course, because we're talking about five years worth of stuff that I, I don't have any way of knowing or going through every single thing. You know what I mean? But the energetic feeling I get from everyone that I have come into contact that has been involved, you know, I, I got to meet Whitney Fisher recently. She was a part of the original Opal tour. Uh, Talison was, part, I think, part of the Opal tour. Um, most of these folks, and certainly everyone in Tennessee, seem to be very open and transparent about everything. And so you're right. I don't, of course, I could be missing energetics because, you know, I'm kind of new to this too, but Seems to me like all the cards are on the table all the way around. Um, as far as these folks are concerned, I I don't feel like there's anybody lying in any of this. I mean, how are you going to stand up in front of a jury and say, "Yeah, that's right. I pushed the button until my mouth broke. I was getting, I was going to see where the end was, you know, <laughs> and get getting this money because it was mine, you know." And again, I. I laugh when people want to try to think that he was stealing anything. How in the hell? I, I still, that will never, ever, that is the biggest thing for me in all of this is anybody who thinks you can get any account to approve if you don't have all the right information. Yeah. But anyway. I, I, I was totally thinking of that when I signed up uh, for the the jail systems uh, but email contact so that I can I can send emails back and forth with Heather and it, it made me go through it an entirely separate uh, verification process in addition to the normal one that that you have to go through and yeah and I'll have to check my, my bank statement, but it looked like this additional verification process cost uh, a, an extra fee, whatever, uh, like 10 bucks or something. Ah, well, yeah. it's all a business, you know. Or maybe, maybe it was, maybe it was four fifty Cause I think the total was nine fifty, and I've only got $5 on this, uh, on right. this account. So the, this entire thing is a racket. Like, okay. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna take a, a friend or loved one and incarcerate them. And if if you want to have any contact with them, guess what? You're gonna you're gonna pay by the email. And 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 we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna double verify the credit card, and we're gonna charge you for that. That you know, I'll have to check my bank statement, but I but I, I feel like that's what's going on. I'm I'm sure you're probably right. I'm sure you're probably right because it is. It's and it's 40 cents each way. I told you that from what I was told, it was 40 cents. You send, it's 40 cents. She sends, it's 40 cents. Yeah. And yeah. and they charge each person for their underwear, their shoes, I mean, everything. E every single thing is charged. And there's, you know, we already know about from the trial itself that every document that is generated that does, I mean, that's one of the reasons that Heather hand wrote on everything she did be in the courtrooms in the, in, in every proceeding she hand wrote on everything because they turned those into money, every document. And, and there's on the IUV, there's a place to, to read all about how that works. I mean, and, See, Clifford Shirley did not know that. 
but she sure explained that. So I don't know. It's just very, but it's interesting. It's all, it, it seems to me, it feels to me like very soon. It's not going to matter. I know, I know that there are lots of folks out there that are tired of hearing that soon word. I get that. Well, let me, I've got, I've got an observation that I can throw out as far as all this. I, it, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't say what is or what's going to happen, but yet another, hey, what is this person's perception if, if this is the way they're talking? Um, so I, when I got up this morning, I checked my email and one of my subscribers <clears throat> had sent me some information and uh, forwarded some correspondence that he had. He was trying to get a hold of Heather. So he sent a letter to the law offices and, and uh, William Thomas Ferguson the third who has been signing the certificate of, of service or electronic service replied back and and I've got his letter here uh, I made a video reading it on my channel but I'll read it to you here because I don't think you've had a chance to watch that yet no I haven't but see that's one of the emails that you and I were both sent because I have that too Oh, okay. Uh, I think that's a cross viewer, actually. Sh that person must view you and me as well. And I will tell you that, and you may not know this, but William Ferguson III is Bill, a.k.a. Taryn Cognito. Oh, okay. I didn't, I didn't know that. I, I hadn't put that all together. Yeah, yeah, that is. So I thought I'd, I thought I'd share that with you. Okay, so... Is, is, is Bill or Taryn Cognito or, or William Thomas Ferguson, is he part of Francis Lloyd's law office? No, he's not. Oh, okay. All right. Right. So, he'd, so, so this subscriber just wrote to the address that William Ferguson put on that certificate of notice. And, That's right. Okay. All right. Um. So is, is William Ferguson a lawyer at all? No. Okay. No, he, he is, he's just a fellow blogger who has been involved with all of this and has helped Heather um, in, you know, using his blog, uh, handling the donations that have come in to house her in, in Tennessee during this whole thing. Um, you know, so he's, it's been, he's part of what I think they're calling the, the team, um, that has helped Heather in, in, you know, logistically and, you know, because she was wearing an ankle monitor while she was out free, basically before the trial, you know, there, there had to be someone who was stepping up to say, I'm going to be responsible for making sure that she does everything she's supposed to do and that she'll have a place to stay and, you know, food to eat and all that kind of thing. He was the responsible party and he was the one that did all of the, you know, service of documents and things like that for her since she was, you know, representing herself and that sort of thing. Wow. That's all really interesting. Thanks for clearing that up. I, I wasn't, quite sure of how he connected in with all of this, but that, that makes things uh, a little clearer. Okay. So, uh, so he, he wrote uh, back to the subscriber. I'm enclosing your letter in a screen in a screenshot of jailatm.com. That's the service, the online service you go through uh, that showed the facility that she was at and the, the name that she's, uh, what residing in there under. Right. And if you wish to communicate with her directly, she was taken into detention following the jury verdict of February 1st, 2018. I feel her detention will be short lived. She did nothing wrong and committed no quote conspiracy to commit money laundering end quote. There is no justice in what happened here in Knoxville. With the filings of this week, it feels like my need to stay in Tennessee is coming to a close. The systems were contractually closed out yesterday by their own choice. 
how it all plays out. I'm just kind of correcting a typo. Uh, I don't exactly know, but I do know everything has gone on on this planet was by contract. I know the universal cleanup has moved into a vastly expanded phase, and that should become apparent within days, if not weeks. So if you desire to email her, he suggests creating an account at jailatm.com. Um, and, and that was pretty much uh, the, the meat of the letter there. And so just the words about the universal cleanup and his, what, needing to, to stay in Tennessee. Where, where is he from? I'm not quite sure where he resides in this moment of now. I, I, I'm not clear on that myself. I only met Bill for the first time in October when I went over with Lisa for the hearing uh, okay. in October. And I, of course, you know, the two weeks that we spent in Knoxville just recently, I got, you know, a chance to get to know him a little better. Um, <clears throat> but I, I was give to understand when I first met him in October that he is, um, Taryn Cognito, used to also go by the name um, American Kabuki was his original blog. And <clears throat> it's my understanding that that has been um, archived in some way. And his new blog is Taryn Cognito. And okay. um, so How he's old? been on, on the, like the team, I guess you'd say for, for some time. Okay. How old do, how old do you think he is? Um, I don't think he's my, I'm 56. I don't think he's quite my age, but um, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not real sure. Okay. Probably late forties, uh, early fifties, I would say probably. Okay. All right. That, that's really interesting. Um, the reason I, the reason I was following up with those additional questions is, is I got a pretty interesting email with a screenshot uh, after I posted my video reading William Ferguson's letter. And it was a screenshot to uh, an obituary page. And uh, if you search, if you just type in, I, I was using DuckDuckGo, but if you type into a search engine, William Thomas Ferguson III, Knoxville, uh, the one of the very first returns is an obituary. And, and it just, it, it just made me start uh, really wow. just having some interesting feelings about everything. That was, that was interesting. So uh, yeah. apparently this William Ferguson died in 2010. Um, and, and you want to talk about uh, the system sequestering information and holding a price tag on it. The obituary is, is no longer available, but for a $2.95 fee, you can restore it for 24 hours, or you could sponsor it permanently and keep that up for a one-time donation of $38. It's like, oh, wow, oh, I want to get the details on this guy so that I can you know, at least have some information to compare uh, and find out if there's something funny going on here. But but everything's locked up behind uh, behind price tags. Wow. I'm not surprised, though. I tell you, the more I go along, the more the more I can see very clearly um, that energy harvesting system that we all talk about. I mean, it's everywhere and everything. And yeah, so I'm choosing the, I just had a conversation just a little bit ago. I'm choosing a different playground now. I'm done with that. I don't wish to play in that playground anymore. And so I'm ready for it to be over and I'm not gonna, I'm done with that. <laughs> I, really would like, I really would like for that to be over and I think it will be. I do think that is I find the the wording that he used in that letter very interesting. Contractually, it is closed. Mm -hmm. Well, and he gave a specific time frame too. Uh, con the the systems were contractually closed out yesterday by their own choice, like. <laughs> 
I, I didn't, I didn't hear anything about it before this letter. Really? Well, <clears throat> with, with the, with the, some of the information coming into my awareness in regards to the whole thing, there's another, um, set of phone calls that I was not privy to until this past, well, actually just last night. And I've only been able to hear the first one. There's apparently it's a very, they've broken it up into several and I'm happy to share the link with you. This came through Facebook. So I'm not sure. I know you don't do Facebook, so I'm not sure, but I, I should be able to share the link with you. It, they are Vimeos. They're, they're videos through Vimeo. Oh, okay. I should be and, able to get those. Okay. Recorded conversations that took place beginning, I think it was in April of 2017, which again, uh, Heather was not in my purview at that point. Mm -hmm. So, but this is a more recent um, recording that was done. And just hearing the very first portion, which was only about 25 minutes, which is all I've had the chance to hear, I can see the correlations with what's going on here, you know, from everything I've seen so far. It's just like more puzzle pieces coming in. Now, on, now truly comprehending the fact that when the original filings were done, they had five years to close it out of their own volition but they only had five years. They chose, and again, remember that email that you and I discussed last time we talked to each other, they chose not to do this, were her words. Mm -hmm. They chose a different path. Well, then learning that the five years was up on the solstice of December, 2017, and what comes out on the solstice of 2017? Uh, Executive Order 13818, mm -hmm. doing away with human trafficking and slavery. Oh, that's very interesting. And then all of this has occurred with the trial and all this data coming out clearly in the public, maybe not as big a public venue as, you know, some may think it deserves, yes. But quite frankly, I think there's a reason for that too now in this moment of now, but it's in the system because it's not, I really clearly get that whole not happening in a vacuum thing now too, in that energetically it is done. Whether everybody knows it or not, it is done. And those questions she asked Parker Sill was another piece of the puzzle in regards to court martials and you know my feeling about the military tribunal and now there's an executive order that is amending and i'm you know, yes i don't have all the information about what it's amending but the fact that it's amending the court martial manual feels significant and a puzzle piece for sure and it's just all leading up to now you're telling me that I hadn't put it together with the fact that the systems were closed contractually yesterday. It's he said, right? Whatever. Yeah, the, that's, and so this the, was dated uh, the 27th of February, 2018. So that would be the 26th of February. Okay. And um, I, I want to say I'm not certain when this EO came out for sure. I think, I don't think it was any earlier than the first. It might have been earlier than that. I'm not certain. I, I seem to recall the first, um, but I can pop over to IUV and we'll just check the, the date that IUV posted that up. Okay. I appreciate that. I want to say it's the first, but I, I wasn't certain of that. It could have been earlier. <clears throat> but you see so she posted this on the third let's see what the date is so the date of the executive order is march 1st yeah, so it was published right. on uh, whitehouse.gov on march 1st 
right? That's what I thought. So, you know, again, that feels and seems significant to me. And in that, in that, because there's one thing I did read as I was digging into that. And it said that any crimes that were listed that were committed prior to this amending of the court martial manual would be treated in the modes that were uh, that were prior. In other words, the way I took that in was, if you weren't doing what you're supposed to do before this went into effect, you'll get punished to the laws of that. But if you continue with your little antics, whatever they might be, this is all me saying this and I haven't dug into the whole thing, but this is what I, this was my energetic take from what I read so far. If you keep doing it and we find out after this date, well, you're going to get what we say now. That was my first glance energetic take from what I read in regards to that. Now exactly what all of that is yet I don't have because I'm, I want to dig into it farther, but it's all very interesting and points in the direction of this, uh, finally really being over in, 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 in more than just an energetic sense. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't read the executive order yet either, so I, I can't comment, but uh, I, I really hope that your energetic uh, take on it uh, manifests. Yeah, sure. me too, quickly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I'm really hoping the, uh, the transcripts are available soon. Do we, any, any more word on that? I have not, no, I have not heard anything new on that. Um, I'm not sure, again, if <laughs> the fact that they're not available this far out, you know, again, I don't really know what's, what's common practice in any of this sort of thing. So I can't speak to that, but it would seem to me like court reporting is keys, very similar to uh, shorthand, actual dictation shorthand. And so the fact that it's going into a system as it is being said, seems to me like it'd be, and it's done. Now again, I don't really know. Maybe they got to, do something but you know it's been a month now you know it's been 28 full days actually longer as of this time but i don't care if you had to write it longhand it would seem to me like it would be something that could be gotten to at this point the fact that they haven't been released yet is another quizzical thing to me that points in the direction of, you know, this, none of this being uh, standard or, you know, I, I, it's, it's all very odd to me. And again, I don't, I don't know what the actual protocols are, but it would seem to me that 28 days or longer after a trial, at least even the first half of the transcripts would be ready to be released. I mean, the judge had to grant a special dispensation because the transcripts weren't released yet. Oh, wait, talk more about that. I haven't, this is the first I'm hearing of that. Heather placed a, did a filing that extended her time for filings after the the verdict you know post verdict filings um he had to grant an extension because you only have so long to make filings apparently after after a verdict and because the transcripts weren't ready she had to request an extension and well of course he had to grant it 
Hmm. Because they're claiming the transcripts aren't available. Okay. Wow. This is all really interesting. Thanks for clearing that up. This is, this are part of the additional filings, uh, what, through 155 that, that I haven't read through yet. I'm only up to 151. So that's, yeah, yeah. So those, the, the normal yeah. prescribed time limits that the court has set out for post-verdict filings is woefully inadequate in this case. And uh, normally these prescribed time limits are ample so that it just cuts down on judges having to look at all these motions for extending the filing periods because their court reporters can't crank out a, a, a simple verbatim copy of the day's proceedings. That's right. really interesting. It makes me wonder what kind of sanitization may be going on. Like, let's get these documents out to the light of day. Right. Well, that's, you know, be, <clears throat> I was not present in the courtroom for the hearing in October. I, for whatever reason, felt moved to sit outside. And it was a very short hearing in terms of timing. It only went from 9 a.m. to, I think, 11 something. But at any rate, apparently, according to those who were present for that hearing, Lisa being one of them, Katie being another, when the transcripts for that hearing came out, they were sanitized in that there were, you know, apparently uh, mispronunciations of precipe, uh, not a, an understanding of what precipe was or is, so there was quite a bit of sanitization of those transcripts. And so well, it didn't even, it didn't even list the verbiage that, uh, of the swearing in. Are right, you're talking about Washington DC, right? No, I'm talking about with C. Clifford Shirley in Knoxville. Oh, the okay. In October. The detention hearing. Right. Okay. Well, no, this was the, well, no, this was the hearing in regards to the press pay when Heather gave, you know, he, uh, see, the way I, my comprehension of that whole thing was that that hearing was about the press pay. It was my comprehension. I could be wrong about that because I didn't go into that one. Remember, I sat outside, but the whole thing was, no, you're not, you know, it was supposed to be over jurisdiction and authority and the precipe was the standing order to, to that you don't have the right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the, the judge didn't apparently, again, this is hearsay on my part as I was not in the room, did not comprehend what a precipe was. And actually didn't pronounce it correctly in the whole nine yards. Did, had to have it explained to him. But a lot of that was not in, in the transcripts. Oh, wow. That's really interesting. Wow. That's what I mean about sanitization. I mean, yeah. and since I've just had a little bout with my own ego here recently, I can see that that's why that was sanitized. Mm-hmm. I can imagine that a judge wouldn't want it out there that he doesn't know what a press pay is. Yeah, well, I'm going to grab my Black's Law Dictionary and we'll just find out the page that that's on for C. Clifford. Hold on. <laughs> just in case old C. Clifford is watching. Black's right? Law. Okay. Let's clear off a little bit of space here. <laughs> All right. Well, we're already in the 650 page numbers and we're only in E, so hold on. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Okay, P-R-E, we're in the 1300s. Let's see. Is it E or A? 
I thought it was. It's A, yeah. I, I just grabbed a chunk and I flipped too far. So we're on page 1362. And we'll try and get this up here. I need to be able to see my screen. Is that coming through? Mm, yeah. Well, it's not thing? very readable. Okay. We'll have to work on a different way to do that. Okay. But yeah, Presepe on page 1362. It's in the second column about halfway down. And, and it's even got the little phonetical clue sheets on how to, how to pronounce it. Um, <laughs> but it's a noun, Latin meaning command. Yeah. At common law, a writ ordering a defendant to do some act or to explain why inaction is appropriate. Also uh, termed a writ of presepe, a written motion or request seeking some court action, especially uh, a trial setting or an entry of judgment. So it's right here in Black's Law. Um, I'm not sure which year of law school covers page 1362, but but it must have been one of those, or maybe in his training as a judge, or or somewhere. But but I I do remember him referencing Black's Law Dictionary in one of his responses. So. I feel confident that C. Clifford Shirley has got, has got a copy of this somewhere. I think it was the fourth edition. I've got the tenth here. Right. I got gotcha. you. Well, I did find that, that apparently um, while having the actual physical book is, is much better, the Black's Law Dictionary is apparently also available online for free. Now, you know, so... <clears throat> even if good old C. Cliff didn't have a, a copy handy, I got a feeling somebody somewhere in his office might have been able to clue him in somehow as to what it meant. It, it's amazing that Black's Law Dictionary is available for free. I mean, when are they going to put a, a price tag behind that, huh? Well, you know, I that well, you're right. I mean, I, when I found that trying to search on Pacer – even if you search on Pacer and don't return anything, it still costs you 10 cents. I, I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. That was a bit shocking to me too, but you know, oh, well, I really do feel, well, again, I feel like um, all of that, all, all of that system of that is crumbling and very shortly going to disappear. I don't know what it's going to look like when it does, but I, I do have a feeling that it is. Well, Taryn Cognito, William Ferguson's comments that we should start seeing something in days rather than weeks. That, I mean, <clears throat> I don't, I don't, it just makes me wonder. Okay, what 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 is what does he know? What what perception does he have that 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 comment is rooted in? That's what I want to know. Well, okay, so you know, again, more puzzle pieces for me. This uh, executive, this new executive order, having been issued on March the first, March the second. It was a Friday and Friday they had to enact severe weather uh, enactments or whatever their policies and protocols in DC mm -hmm. and all non-essential personnel, all federal offices were closed, which I found very interesting. Now <clears throat> there was quite a bit of wind. I, I also found a, uh, clip from local um, television station that was <clears throat> showing a, an airplane trying to land <laughs> at Dulles Airport in, in Washington, D.C. So obviously, yeah, obviously there was a lot of, a lot of wind. Uh, there was a lot of power outages and, and whatnot, apparently, because the storm, the storm was so big. 
So I, I found that interesting. I don't this, know. This what, natural event. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Wow, that's a lot of wind in D.C. to have to close down the federal government. Um, which, I, like I said, there was a lot of wind, so that makes sense. But <clears throat> I haven't kept up today now as to what's been going on. Today's Monday. So I'm That's really, a Cinco de Marcho. Ah. Uh, and I haven't checked in over there to see what's going on. Um, I'm sure I probably will tomorrow. Today I had a lot of errands to run and, and whatnot. But <clears throat> I got a feeling that March is coming in like a lion. And... Um, I don't know. I just feel like some stuff's going to go down. I don't have any inside information. I just feel something. I've been feeling something building, but I don't know this with all these other little pieces now that have come in, you know, that executive order. There's just, there's something big behind that, you know, knowing that he decided not just to keep Guantanamo Bay open, but make it bigger. That seemed big. The fact that there's been another, there's a team out there, a storm watcher, I think is what his name is. He's got a team that has, I guess he's got volunteers from all over the place combing the records to make, to, to bring in lists of the sealed indictments and, and it's gotten pretty huge. I wow. saw that. So what, what was that channel again? Um, it's actually, hold on one second. Let me see if I can flip over here and um, because I saw it on the IUV. Um, I don't know that it's a channel. It's a fellow on on Twitter. It's at the Martin thirty two Storm Watcher, and she he has uh, folks from all over. And he said that there's four thousand nine hundred and five new sealed indictments from January 29th to February 28th, 20, from January 29th, for, uh, 2017 to February 28th, 2018. I don't know that. I think that's, I think it's 2018 to 2018 because he's saying that there's actually 18,510 new sealed indictments were entered from October 30th, 2017 to February 28th, 2018. Hmm. And he's got a graph here showing um, the regions. And I, I, there's a whole list, this fellow, whoever he is, and he has said in his Twitter apparently that he has a team from all over that's volunteering to go and look these things up. They have a Google docs that they've been keeping updated. So are, is this a compilation of a whole lot of local searches? Is that yes. what? Oh, wow. That's, that's quite an operation to, to organize searching through all the various court systems, looking for new indictments and, yeah. I mean, uh, you'd think there would be a way that we could log in somewhere and at least see that there are these indictments, indictments existing. I, you know, I think, I think there might be, I, I haven't really looked into that very deeply, but the couple of ones that I saw that were shared um, on Facebook where there's links, because I don't, I, I want to know if, if, you know, because there's a lot of misinformation and disinformation, you know, out there that's bandied about all the time. And um, 
if there's something with a link on it that goes to the White House or, you know, to the DOJ, then, you know, I, I have seen several indictments that have been unsealed in the last couple of months that do, that do come stem from the DOJ. So whether or not the DOJ actually has, that's, that's, that's a piece of research that I haven't undertaken for myself at all yet. I don't really even know if I need to, to be honest, because I feel like, um, I don't even think it's necessary because I just, I just have a feeling. That's a lot of indictments. Yeah, I know. 18,000. I know. Hold on one second. Let me, um, I want to go back over here. I mean, it, it, it makes me wonder if it's all these indictments is, you know, why they're making the changes with the courts martial and, and is that the, is it going to be a new system that, that they're, that they're going to hold these, you know, or funnel these indictments through or, or what? Yeah. See, I have no idea. Um, but this, this here, I'm going to show you actually, since we're talking about it, in case anyone wants to know, I mean, it's on the, uh, I'm going to share my screen and show you Okay. what I'm looking at. I'm at the IUV and <clears throat> this was pull, this was data compiled by Stormwatcher and it's his Twitter, Twitter feed from March the 3rd. And so this is being stored on the IUV too, because you know, B BZ has posted it there. And it states February update to sealed indictments. 4,905 new. I, he's got 129.17 here to 228. I think that's actually 2018, not 17, yeah. especially yeah. in light of these, this number right here. Mm -hmm. because this shows a total of 18,510 new sealed indictments entered from 10-30-2017 through 2-21-18. And he's got backup files to this. Hmm. And how many are normal? 1,077 for the 2009 report. <laughs> wow. So, so, so there, in, in 2009, the average number of indictments for, for which time period are we talking about? Well, I don't know. All I'm seeing is what we, he has here. It would appear, at least, at first blush, all of 2009, there was only 1,077. Right. Yeah, that's, that's what I was asking for sure. So, <laughs> I mean, we're looking at more than 18 times that. That's, yes. So, the, the, the infrastructure then is not in place they don't they don't have infrastructure uh or systems built to handle 18 and a half times their normal load that that is well no unless well right that's what i that this is where it connects in with the with the eo exactly unless you're going to in, enact military tribunals and see, there's a part of me now that has wondered, okay, what has the collective consciousness been prepared for in some circles, in some fear-mongering circles for the last few years? Oh, the government's going to enact martial law. They're going to try to come in and take us over. But what if martial law is being enacted for a whole different reason? What if martial law is enacted to round up bad actors to the tune of 18 to 20,000? To the tune of, of marshalling courts to handle, I mean. See, the, we're, we're, we really start getting into dangerous territory here. I know. I'm aware. Because, uh 
the government, their, their past history is to tell us that they're doing something that we would agree with while really they're doing the opposite. And, and so my mind immediately goes to, okay, the, the government, uh, is, is what, like, if this is what's going on, Oh, we're changing our court systems, the whatnot, so that we can go after and enact martial law and go after these, uh, these government perpetrators. And, and then it's, you know, it's, uh, it's almost, you're just right on the doorstep to carte blanche for for violating people's rights under the guise of, hey, we're we're chasing down these bad government actors, the deep state actors, and and who is it that's going to apply that label onto a person? Well, you know? no, you're right, and so perhaps this is why this is going in the manner in which it is, so that it doesn't have to go to that even. Mm-hmm. I I mean I don't know. I really don't. We're just all watching it unfold in real time. Yeah. Yes, exactly. But I do feel like, well, I feel like the more of us that don't, first of all, for me, okay. For me personally, I, I'm not going to be afraid no matter what happens because I see that things are changing. The energetics of all of this are changing energetics on the planet for me personally it's all changing. That's not a playground I'm going to have to worry about playing in. But I have seen there was a lot of fear mongering for a long time about FEMA camps and martial law and trying to scare the collective into something. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, and if we are all creator beings wandering around creating unconsciously, Mm -hmm. then that's something that they could direct. But the more I feel folks that are, for me personally, I'm holding things a lot differently now. I'm not, I don't, there's some, I'm not looking for a boogeyman anymore. Because I'm also not looking for a savior either. See what I mean? And I don't know. Maybe I've. Well, what I I guess I I understand what you're where I think you're the flavor of your comments are going. You want to stay positive. You don't want to lend any of your creative energies into these, you know, substandard plans and ideas going forward. Um, and there's a balance point in here because at some point we get observations through all of these different avenues, our senses, intuition, um, and those observations are going to be our puzzle pieces that we put together to draw up our narrative of what's going on. And when the observations start changing, um, okay, okay. We, we need to we need to sit back notice the changes and really stay in a state of of pending about it until wow there's just no other way to see this and we're all scratching our heads right now and and tossing back and forth possibilities and and it's all speculation and and it it's great it makes a lot of a lot of fodder and interesting conversation but at the end of the day uh, that that really doesn't advance us too much trying to predict what's happening, but to just be more honest and descriptive and and make general statements about the observations that are going on now is is really where I see the most constructive place to put effort and just knowing that hey I've been lied to by a particular group of people before I've got a stack of observations this high. Now the same group of people is saying something else. Like it just makes me wonder, okay, you know, and I can open up all that speculation. um, And, and, you know, I can hold hope in my heart, but what, uh, what I'm not going to do this time that I have done in the past is to deceive myself to try and hold on to a particular static idea or viewpoint of the world 
um, even though I've got observations coming in to me that uh, really dash that illusion to pieces. And so right now, I don't have any observations that are dashing a hopeful narrative. And uh, I don't have any observations that, that are going to dash, uh, you know, really positive changes happening. I, I see changes. I see non-standard observations. We don't have any precedent for. Change is in the air. That's for sure. Uh, we're just going to be very careful that the the meaning, the perception that we assign to all these changes is as true, accurate, and complete as we can be for ourselves, whatever environment or scenario, heaven or hell, that's going to be. That's kind of where I'm at with it. Yeah, no, me too. Me too, but I, I also feel, at least for me, I see a... I feel like for me the 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 higher the predominant vibratory frequency playground which I'm calling it now I hold for myself because I now can clearly see how what I think feel and pay attention to presents itself in my reality at every turn so far. Yes, there's going to be some other things that because we are in a co-creative stance, I'm not trying to say that, you know, I'm creating in my little bubble over here because we do have a co-creative situation going on here. Absolutely. But the higher, um, vibratory frequency playground i the 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 widest expansion i can hold the better um for myself and for all of us actually because if i'm not wandering around on this planet um in an unconscious fashion being fearful and calling all of what that victim kind of thing to me then then i i feel like that's you know that's a i've seen it already at work in my life in that 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 a different predominant frequency vibratory playground where i don't wish to play if I don't play in that frequency, then I'm not over in that frequency. It just, it's not that it doesn't happen. It just doesn't seem to be happening in my neighborhood right now because I'm not calling it to me. I don't know if that's making any sense. No, I, 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 I understand what you're saying. Um, uh, I don't think, I really don't think we're, we're too far apart. Uh, there's there's a book uh well there's an author don miguel ruiz uh he's probably most famous for his book the four agreements mm -hmm. Maybe. okay so you've come across those there's there's one that's uh, a follow-up to that and he called it the fifth agreement and from what i remember of that it's basically be skeptical but be allowing so that's pretty much all I'm trying to say here is that, hey, uh, we need to be skeptical. We need to inspect and respect and, and author our own perceptions. And right now, uh, uh, we need to be very clear when we're talking about things that might happen or, you know, we've got a sense or a feeling. We, we don't know what's going to happen no. and, and where where. I have really been sidetracked in the past is to be too quick to put a label or a definition on a particular collection of observations or puzzle pieces and to, to have that uh, just become part of my reality and never question again. Um, it, it's the whole process of assigning labels that, that we're reworking and rechanging and it's a it's a lot slower especially in the beginning yeah yeah i'm i'm in agreement i've i've been guilty of that myself you know quickly assigning a label or 
something to a puzzle piece. I mean, I'll keep a hold of that puzzle piece over here to the side. But, and I've had, look, <laughs> I've actually had a lot of revisiting of the Bible, which had a specific label for me, you know, but mm -hmm. it is still a puzzle piece over here to the side. Yeah. And it still holds an energetic label for me that's, you know, sometimes a little, a little tough to get around, but I'm, I'm seeing some things in an energetic fashion that are out, that 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 stem from my background with that that book that I'm seeing in a different light. Um, so for me, what I've learned through all of what I've been doing in the last mm, two years specifically is to hold things loosely. First of all and not put the real like super glue label on it. <laughs> if you're going to label something, yeah, you use might want to use a chalkboard label where you can <laughs> erase it and rewrite it. <laughs> that's my that's my advice. Start using chalkboard labels on stuff so it's easily to erase, <laughs> erase because in this moment of now nothing seems for me anyway, because I'm willing to look at everything. Not everybody is. I get that too. But I really am willing to look at every single thing, um, including some really ingrained stuff. There's going to be some videos coming out tomorrow that either late tonight or tomorrow that folks will get what I mean. Um, you know, some really ingrained personal issues that, you know, hey, had some labels on them, had to be re-looked at, re, 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 re you know. Those are the most important ones to, to examine. Wow, yeah. Yep, so uh, I got me a real big supply of chalkboard labels <laughs> and some chalk. <laughs> so, yeah. That's, that's, that's the one thing I, I'm getting pretty good at this metaphor thing. Yeah. Right. You fired your engraver, right? <laughs> that's right. I sure did. Sure did. <laughs> You're out of here. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So you're right. It's going to be interesting times very, very quickly here. I think. Yeah. Well, we'll, uh, We'll just take the observations one day at a time and uh, and work with the chalkboard labels then. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Well, it's been a lot of fun. Thanks a lot, Sheila. Hey, thank you. I'm so glad that you you don't mind coming to play. Um, and I still want us to get together and 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 um, we we kind of chatted about the newest filings and the newest little goings on here this time, but we need to get together and do our are do you see and oh yeah yeah, yeah the really. yeah the doozies and the and the canoe that you find yes. at the dock that's right yes. yeah well the uh what, what i'll give you a little just a little nugget here and please and, do i love those little nuggets of yours and, and i don't remember if i gave you this one before or not but <clears throat> when you look at the word perceive You've got per, which is through, and sieve, which is filter. So perceive is to filter through. And when you are filtering through your observations, um, you're really filtering the observations using patterns, pattern recognition. Uh, and you're like, wow, okay, every time... I'm in this place with these people on this day of the week. I feel this inside and oh my gosh, you know, once you see that dynamic in one pattern, two patterns, oh, maybe I can start going back through some other observations of some other feelings that I had and find another pattern. And pretty soon this, you know, the do that we're keeping in our loo, just this life experiences of things that don't make sense, using our little 
our strainer, our sieve, and filtering through, eventually we find that one little nugget, that clue, in there, among all the do, in the loo. And so, one piece at a time, one nugget at a time, we put all of these direct observations of knowing together. And that's the DOK, that's all the docs. And when you're on the dock, you usually find the seaworthy vessels there. And that's, we talked about that, that's the canoe. C-A-N-O-E or K-N-O-W. And so, you pretty much know that when you find your canoe and get in it and it's supporting you, that you're seeking. You're sensing an emotional experience of knowing. But when you're the sea king, excuse me, when you're seeking, you are the sea king. And the sea sees a king and supports you and all of your canoe. So you get in your canoe and you row, row, row. And you don't have to pay the ferryman anymore. But eventually, you find that there is a big, long, flat space, a big ledge. And you can put on that all that you know. That's your ledge. You put on all these little tidbits now that you've come to a place of knowing about. That is your no ledge. And now you're the only one that has access to it. You don't have to pay the ferryman to go back and forth anymore. So you're no ledge. It's all safe. Wow. I love that. That came in another packet for you, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I've got a, I've got a little book here that, that I write down all these little things about. Uh, let's see if I can find a page that I can share on here with you. Hmm. Well, here's, here's just a quick page. Well, that really doesn't... I wasn't prepared to really look through this. Well, that's okay. Yeah. We'll have to we'll have to schedule and well, well I'll tell you what, why don't we close this one out and you just stay right there so that we can try to schedule okay. schedule that one. But um I will put a link to your channel in the body of this video along with the link to the Friends of Conscious Conversation Central Facebook page and my email address. And so till next time. Thank you. And thank you. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. It has been a lot of fun. Thank you. Awesome. I love that. I want to do a whole,